so I'm just going to wait a little bit for people to start coming on. When you come on guys, say hello so I can see who's here. I am so excited for our day one of the Unstoppable Confidence Workshop. So in the last one that I did last year, well no it was this year in January, I did it in the day but this time I thought that I would try in the evening and see if that's going to help people because I know, you know, children and work and stuff. And sometimes it's nice to do these things in the evening for ourselves, isn't it, when there's no distractions. If you hear a funny noise in the background, that's just my kitten. <laughs> it's the way he eats at the moment. Hey, beautiful Katie. Hi, Alice. Oh, it's so nice to see everybody coming on. I'll just wait a couple more minutes and we can get started. So just so you guys know that day one is, I've done a worksheet for this. So it'll give you kind of a guide. The worksheet is linked in the group. Don't worry if you haven't got it to hand right now. Um, it could be something that you look at after the live. So basically the worksheet is that you can print it off if you want to, or you can just use it as a guideline and then copy like the headlines in your notebook. So there's going to be things that I want you to do um, during the live and after the live. And you can make note of these things on that sheet of paper if you print it off or in your notebook. It's just as a little guide. So I am going to get started and then I know quite a few people are going to watch this on the replay. So a little bit about me, just so that you guys understand why I do what I do, why I'm so passionate about it and where I've come from so that you can get to know me as well. Um, so I'm Alessia, I am a mama to three beautiful children. Um, I have a 10 year old, a six year old and a five year old. So I am 37 and I became a single mama last year. And I blim and love it. So I, going back, my childhood was like, loved it. And I was very, very grateful for my childhood. But with that, because I was so protected as a child, I thought the world was pink fluffy clouds and everything was great. I did not have any understanding of relationships or what was healthy, unhealthy. And I don't feel society in those days discussed it either. So when I was 19, I got into an abusive relationship with somebody. It was physical and sexual abuse. He then proceeded to stalk me for four and a half years. Um, I was really let down by the police and there was no one out there who would support women and who would discuss domestic abuse. Not ever did I hear that title said to me. So I thought that that domestic abuse was a physical type of abuse. I didn't even realise at the time that it was sexual abuse either. I did not realise this. My self-harm started then, my mental health um, deteriorated, and I developed post-traumatic stress disorder as well. So um, depression, anxiety, and I had um, mental health support at the time. Um, but the mental health support was literally, they put their medication, diagnosed me, and then it was like, goodbye, see you later. So I crumbled, my confidence went. It took me a while, but I started to build myself back up again and I got into a job that I absolutely loved. I worked with vulnerable families. I worked with families where there was domestic abuse, mental health, um, and all sorts of different things going on for them. And it was something I was super passionate about. And I realized by being in that job, there was so much more to do in this world and so much more that I wanted to do to help women. When I was in that job, I was trained in domestic abuse and I did do a lot of cases where there were domestic abuse. So I came to learn that domestic abuse was a massive rainbow of so much. There was coercive control, narcissism, there's emotional abuse, there's financial abuse, there's so much more. By working in that job and coming across so many women um, in so many situations like that, I realised that women's voices are not heard enough women are made to feel like we need to put in this box and be quiet and that we have to behave almost and in life you should literally only want to be a good girl dress a certain way be feminine but then you have to look a certain way as well to be accepted that you should not have any views that you should strive to be a wife and a mum and that's it 
I felt really passionate about these things, but I felt very silenced. I didn't feel like in that role and in the relationship I was in at that time that I was able to express those feelings. The relationship that I was in at the time was highly toxic and controlling. And I fled in January in lockdown, not this January, January before with my three kids after 12 years. And I don't think I realized how toxic that was until COVID happened, until I was in lockdown and until I sat there and thought, who the hell am I? I lost who I was completely. I had no voice, I had no control. I forgot what I liked, what I disliked. I forgot it was what it was like to kind of feel free. Freedom was gone. I just literally woke up, survived, went to sleep. Woke up, survived, went to sleep. It hit me in lockdown that there was so much more to life, that women are made to feel like we need to fit into society's kind of way. We were made to feel that we just need to get on with things. And we've always been made to feel like we have to fit into what men would want us to be like as well. There's so, there's so much I could talk about, but I'm not going to go on about it too much. I just want you to realize that my passion comes from my experiences and coming out of those experiences and remembering who I am again and finding who I am again. Because even when you become a mother, you completely lose who you are. You're so focused on this little human being that you've created that you go completely out of the window. I forgot what I liked, color wise, music, everything. I would go to work and that was my escape because work was my safe haven. So I would be confident, appearing confident, but deep down inside I felt shattered and I was broken and I had so much fear. So then I left the toxic household I was in um, and I had to go into rental because me and my children were not able to stay in that home anymore and literally I was literally like a rabbit in headlights just dropped and I just thought oh my god and then I lost my job because they wouldn't support me so I just literally sat there and thought okay I have three humans to look after and I'm important too let's do this so I started this business this business I've created to help you I want to help as many women as I possibly can because you deserve to have more than what you allow yourself to have. Just think about that. Do you say yes for you? Do you put yourself ever first? And that even includes if you're a parent. I felt like because my batteries had completely drained, I was not giving as much as I could to my children. We are important too, and it's important to show our children and our peers and our family and, you know, cousins, etc., friends, children. It's important to show them that you can do anything and that you are important and that when you fill your cup, incredible things will happen. You are allowed to have this. You are allowed to create the life of your dreams. If somebody said to me this time five years ago, Alessia, in five years time, you would have left this abusive household. You would have become a single parent of three. You will start a business and you will help transform other women and you will feel freedom, confidence, happiness. I would have literally turned to them and gone, absolutely not, what me? Because I was made to believe the life I was living was all I should strive for and that that is all I was worth. But you are worth so much more and I want to be here to help you all believe that and get to that. So the Unstoppable Confidence is going to be a confidence workshop where we look at us as women, we build on that because when you build your identity back when you are authentically you, your confidence will bloom even more. A lot of the time, a lot of women that I work with will say, I don't know who I am anymore. I'm living through life and I feel so much fear. And it's when you get them back to who they really are and getting them to feel comfortable with being who they authentically are, 
that's when magic will happen. That's when they will bloom with confidence and flourish and start to think, oh God, yeah, this is who I am and this is okay. And that's when they start to map out their lives and create the life they dream of. So the first thing that I'd love for you all to do is we're going to look at where we are at the moment and how we're feeling. I'd love for you to put your hand on your chest area and I'd love for you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable to do so. And we're going to take a really deep breath through our nose and then breathe out through our mouth. Through our mouse. So ready? In. Out. We're going to do it again. In. Out. And one more time. In. Out. Okay. Now what I'd love for you to answer yourself is this. How am I feeling today? How am I feeling at this moment? And note it down. You can put it in the comments if you like. So if I'm going to tell you how I feel today, if I how I feel right now, I feel excitement. I'm excited to be doing this. And on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being the best ever, not being the worst ever, I would probably put myself at a 8. And the reason I put myself as, a, at a, as an 8 is because I am tired and I feel really, I think, quite hot and like, I don't know, I'm not coming down with anything, but health-wise, I would probably put an 8 as I am being tested for peri perimenopause, or I think that's what it is, um, due to stress from what happened last year. So I think all of that makes me feel that little bit lower, but I'm excited and I'm happy to be here. And I'm happy that there are people here with me. I love helping you. It just gives me a buzz. So really think about it. How are you? Put it in the comments below and see if you can scale yourself as well. And if you don't want to, that's fine. Put it on your in your notebook or on your worksheet. So let me just go through the comments. Hi, Jo. You're one of the strongest women I've ever met. Oh, Jo, so are you. Big hugs until we were out together and you realised you couldn't be in lockdown with him. That's right, Becky. So Becky's one of my friends and she helped me. Um, I loved working with you. <laughs> I loved work when you turned up. Thanks, Katie. We did have a giggle, didn't we? You help by being you, Gruffalo, and you will be a Gruffalo and have games night. Alice, positive, Katie, motivated, Alice, 8 out of 10. So Alice with an 8 out of 10, tell me why it's an 8 out of 10. What does 8 out of 10 mean to you? So these are the kind of things I'd love for you ladies to practice every day. And if you don't do it every day, then try and do it at the beginning of every week. So think to yourself, right, how am I feeling right now? What am I feeling inside? And then I want you to scale yourself and think about what that number means to you in that moment and I do this with the women that I work with every single session we do this at the beginning then what I want you to do is when you've figured out your feeling you figured out where you are on the scale I want you to write down why you're on that scale at that number and then I want you to look at how can I get to the next number so for me to get to nine I feel like I just need to have an early night I think that's going to help me a better night's sleep and then tomorrow, I will work, wake up feeling refreshed and I'll feel a nine. So can you see how you can really kind of use this tool to help you? So it's actually called Solution Focused Therapy, which is what I am trained in. And it's a really powerful practice to do. So right now, ladies, if you can think about the number, and then I'd like you to think about how you can get to the next number along. So have a little think about that. So for you, Alice, you say you're eight and I turn. Okay, so what does that mean? And then from that, I'd like you to then say to yourself, okay, how can I get to a nine? A lot of the time, people are made to feel like they need to aim for the top of everything. You don't need to. It's all about small steps. And small steps and small changes have massive impact. And this is what I learned myself. So when I was in lockdown, um, for me to be able to leave, I had to create this unstoppable confidence within myself i had to create this powerful mindset and i had to create an unbreakable motivation and empowerment and ignite my heart almost to go i can do this no matter what i am capable of this so 
I would practice this every day and I would say to myself in the morning, okay, this is where I feel right now. How am I going to get to the next step? And it was always a small step and that's okay. And then gradually what you will find is when you practice this and you practice small steps rather than going from A to Z, go from A to B and then go from B to C and then go from C to D. And that's okay because doing those small changes means that your mind isn't going to be overwhelmed. It's like when you change your routine. So my morning routine, I changed, but I did little changes every day. And those little changes made massive impact. So I started where I would wake up. My children always woke up early anyway, they still do. I'd wake up and I would just do breathing. And that's what I started off with. Did that for a few days. And then I would add in, after my breathing, I thought, well, I'm gonna add in something else. And I add in affirmations. Then I start affirmations in the shower. And then after a few days, I did breathing, affirmations, and then I started workouts. Can you see? And then after a few days, and then I did something else and something else and something else. And before I knew it, my morning routine was bam, done, sorted, and my mindset flew. So I want you to practice this as much as you can. And we can go through routines as well. I mean, I'm more than happy to go through that with people. Okay, so Becky, 7 out of 10 because I've not seen my bestie and I miss her. <laughs> okay, so how can we help you get to an 8? What could that be? Maybe you could give your bestie a date and that's one step, small step forwards to seeing her. Joe, I feel like a five out of 10 is not feeling 100% at the moment. Okay, so what I'd like you to do with that, Joe, is channel that feeling and try and think about the feelings of not feeling 100%. What, what are they? Are they sadness? Are they feeling lost? Are they feeling low mood? What are those feelings? Alice, I'm at eight as I'm really excited for beginning new journeys in my life. I'm not higher yet due to the anxieties that come with going into the unknown. Absolutely. When we make changes in our lives, that is one of the things that will come up is fear. Fear is what our brain uses to protect us. So as a human, it's a natural feeling that we will get. Fear is natural. But sometimes fear can stop us from doing something that is not going to harm us it's just that our brain fears that change because it's the unknown and that unknown makes our brain go into this is going to harm us we need to protect ourselves fear 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 and then you end up not doing it but you can overcome that fear and that's what all this work means and that's what mindset work does as well i do so much of this in my coaching with women and it's so powerful and this is all the stuff I did for myself I mean I never dreamt that I could have done that in lockdown so not only was it I left but it was on my own because it was a lockdown where nobody could mix households oh I still look back now and I go is that me <laughs> but it was because that's always been me it's just that I was closed in this little box and made to feel like I shouldn't strive for more and that I shouldn't even think about ending a marriage because marriage is for life right you should strive to be in a relationship or be married you should strive to be a mother how many times have people been asked when are you when are you get married you're not in a relationship why are you not in a relationship you're 30 something when are you having another child you've just popped one out when you when you're having your next child it's like let me breathe women are made to feel like we literally have to conform by all these rules women's football flipping love at the fact that women's football is on tv and celebrated when i was younger one of my dreams was to be a footballer because my dad was a professional footballer and i wasn't able to do that i was told in secondary school that i could not play football because i was a girl i mean that wasn't that long ago. That was like 20 years ago. No, more than that. You know, and when you really think about that, that was only 20 something years ago. And I was told because of my gender, I could not play a sport. Crazy. And I feel now women are punished for how we look. Your teeth aren't straight enough. Your nose is too big. Your eyes are too this, too small, too this, too that. Your hair's got grey strands in it. Your figure's not like this, your figure's not like that. Christ, no wonder why so many women feel so shit about themselves. So, we are going to look at that scale and we're going to look at how we can up-level that. 
And I think that's really, really important for us to practice this on a daily basis. I think I can move up the scale by taking one step at a time towards my goals I have been so far and by staying in the moment and keeping a positive mindset. Amazing, Alice. Hi, Michelle. Oh, I'm so glad you could make it. Stress, anxiety and a recent loss make me feel low at the moment. Three. OK, thank you for telling me that. And Michelle, you know what? Grief. Um, grief is one of those things that can literally take you sideways. And grief isn't just losing somebody. There's also the loss of a relationship, the loss of a friendship. Um, and what I'll do with you, Michelle, is I'll send you something that is called the grief model that I do with some women. And the grief model shows you the cycle of emotions that you go through, through grief. So I'll send, I'll send you that, my love. I will send you that. Um, and then let's have a look. Katie, six out of ten in quite a bit of pain today. Oh, I'm still... I'm tired, still have a bit to do before bed. I feel like I'm heading towards a scary part of the year when my hubby starts working so much and I get left picking up all the children's stuff. So maybe overwhelmed or preempting being overwhelmed. All right, my love. I think, again, being a mother is freaking hard work. And when you are left to it like that, it is overwhelming. So I want you to give yourself, be gentle on yourself, basically that's okay you're allowed to feel all those feelings and you're allowed to ask for help katie okay please ask for help if there's people i.e me that you want help from we will all be there to help you and yeah you've got this you are so much stronger than what you realize you really are katie i've always admired you so now i'd like you to think katie how can you get to seven what can you do that's a small step that isn't an overwhelming step what can you do to help you get to seven Hey, yeah, I feel really motivated to change my morning oops my morning routine and start adding more time to mine amazing so I know that you have children as well Kaylee so it'd be really really good for you to now think about what can you what change can you make in your routine starting if not tomorrow the day after what can you do could you maybe wake up 10 minutes earlier before your child wakes up and have that 10 minutes just to breathe and just to be still or could you, you know, if you have a shower in the morning, for example, could you do it where you start doing affirmations in the shower? All these kind of things, ladies, I will send through in the chat um, on the main page so you've got them. Things like things to listen to for affirmations and things like that. Michelle, I know what's causing each is about working through each separate issue. OK, lockdown. I was content. I was having my children. I also have three. Wowzers. Yes, mum, I have three. They were close. They got up. They go on. They were close, they go on. Okay. Okay, perfect. Joe, I'm not well at the moment, sick bug in the house. Oh no, and I feel exhausted and feel like I'm stuck in a job because I'm scared to look for another due to so much rejection I've had in the past and applying for jobs due to redundancy. Yeah, and that rejection really can stay with you, can't it? And sometimes um, feelings of rejection can, can manifest from childhood. So It'd be really good for you, Joe, to have a little look at all the times you've been rejected in your life from being a child up to now and then have a look at each one. And when you look at each one, I want you to say to yourself, OK, I was rejected from that job because and your because isn't going to be something negative about you. It's going to be something positive. Your because is going to be because I was too good for that role. I was rejected for that job because they could not handle my expertise. I was rejected from that job because I am worth more. So what would be really, really good is you to start doing redirection. So redirecting your feelings when you feel like that. So getting yourself a channel into something else and to take those sentences in your head about rejection and flipping them and rephrasing them to something more positive and keep repeating that to yourself. Katie, but if you crack on, if you can crack on with you, then I can do it. Yes, you can. Absolutely, Katie, you have got this. Katie, definitely, and I feel really unhappy with my body since having my daughter. So I think for me, waking up early and adding workouts to my morning routine will help too. Amazing, Kaylee. Uh, YouTube is amazing for that. So literally just Google like five minute, 10 minute workouts. And honestly, five minutes, 10 minutes, you can start to build on that as you get more more um, used to that being in your routine. Um, the max I could always do is about 20 minutes. I had three children climbing all over me during workouts. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Oh, lush to see you. Okay. So thank you, ladies, for all of that. I'd love to know about what your next steps are. So what the small changes are going to be over the next few days. So what are you going to put in place to help you get up that scale? All right. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to write your name in the middle of the page. 
And I want you to say to yourself, who am I? So you know that I was saying, if we're not authentically us, if we're not actually living how we really want to live, we will not feel confident. When I was going back, like going back like a year, if I look back at myself over that time, those 12 years in particular, I don't know who I was. I don't recognize that person. And when I came out of that situation, my family literally turned to me and were like, we've got you back. We've lost you. We completely lost you. You lost your sparkle. And what I've noticed is over the period of time of my healing now is I'm getting my voice back. I have opinions. I'm like, oh my God, this girl is talking. I'm like, yeah. I feel like I have confidence to walk into a room, to walk out my front door without fear. I have confidence to get on a live. I've never done this before. I have the confidence to dress how I want. I have the confidence to be me and know that I am worthy of exactly what I desire to have in my life and exactly what I have and exactly what I'm working towards. And I want you all to feel that too because you are all worth that, so worth that. Allow yourself. A lot of the time I think that going past the generations, we as women were made to feel like we had to wake up, get dressed in a certain way, go downstairs, basically clean, clean, cook, clean, nurture, everyone else apart from ourselves and we couldn't strive for careers we couldn't strive for anything more that was it and we have to break that if you don't want to get married don't if you don't want to have children don't if you want to get married great if you want to have kids great if you want to have purple hair go for it if you want to suddenly get a tattoo do it if you want to leave everything behind and travel the world do it Again, age, gender, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. I'll just see if it wants to say anything. Okay, so, Katie. Okay, to get to seven, affirmations and showers are a good show. I have a happy book, amazing, and I try to write down in it every day something that makes me happy from that day. Yes, gratitude is another thing I was going to talk about. Every day may not be good, but there is good in every day or something like that. Yep, that's right. Need to remember to do it because it does help. Joe, I never thought of that before. Amazing, Joe, go for it. Kaylee, thank you, lovely. I'll definitely check that out. It's just popping my little one to bed. I shall catch up anything when I miss when, miss when I get back. Perfect. Hope bedtime goes well, Kaylee. Joe, yes, Alessia Patcher. <laughs> so, gratitude. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Let's go on to our name first. So, put your name in the middle of the page. Sorry, I do go off on a tangent because I get so excited. <laughs> Put your name in the middle of the page. Um, what I'd like you to do right now is reflect on you. This is your time, ladies, okay? Not, this isn't for anyone else, this is for you. Write your name in the middle of the page and all around that page I want you to write down things you like, things you don't like, what you're passionate about, what you love, what you don't like, as in what you're not passionate about, things that you enjoy doing, things that give you sparkles of joy things you want to get in life things you dream of this page is about you who are you who is joe who is kaylee who is kate who is katie i'm just thinking about all the women that are on here now who is alice who are you if i was going to come to you and i never met you before and you gave me this piece of paper, would I have an idea of who you are? If you saw your name in the middle of the paper, would you know what to write? Would you know who you are? Because so many women I talk to and so many women I work with don't know who they are anymore. And that is what we need to try and get today. So I'd love for you to all give that a go. And you can start that now and then maybe finish it after the live. It's up to you. So I'm just going to say a few things that I would put on mine. So I'm Alessia. I would put that I love spending time with children. I would put that I love pasta, ridiculous amounts. I would put that I am passionate about safeguarding children and women. I would put that I, I 
I love home interior. I would put that I love fashion and beauty. I would put that I don't like celery. Random, I know. I would put that I really, really want to travel. I want my business to flourish. I want to be, be able to own a home for my children. I want to be able to have the ability to book a flight tomorrow and go away somewhere amazing. So can you see, like, just thinking off the top of my head, that is what I would put, start to put down. I love the color, I love pastel colors, that's another thing. I love doing whatever I want with my hair. I love my country, Italy, that's where I'm from. I love my country, I'm passionate about my country and where I come from. So that took me, and that sounds maybe a bit silly to some people, but that's taken me a long time to be able to do. If people asked me this, say even two years ago, I'd have been like, ah, I don't, I don't know anymore. Because I genuinely didn't know. And by not knowing who I was, I wasn't confident. So one of the keys to feeling confident is knowing who we are and what we want. And then when we step into that, we then start with our confidence. We start to get it to flourish and bloom. Okay, so I'll leave you ladies to get on with that. Um, you can either do it during the live or afterwards. And then it'd be really good if you could um, take a picture and share it with me. You can either share it in the group or share it on Messenger. So it'd be really, really good for you ladies to do that because it's important to find ourselves again, okay? Really, really important. So we've done the scale, we've done who we are. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what makes us feel. So I want you to start to reflect. This is again getting to know who we are. If I said to you what makes you feel happy, what would you say? Could you share it in the comments below? What makes you happy? So for me, what makes me feel happy is my children laughing, the beach, pasta, <laughs> listening to music, and probably being with my family in the garden and eating, and Italy. Those things make me happy. I'd love for you to have a little think about what makes you happy. See if you can note it down for me in the comments. Another thing that I'd like you to think about as well is what makes you feel confident? What makes you feel confident? So let me write these in here. So what makes you feel happy? What makes you feel confident? What makes you feel makes you feel relaxed okay start to think about those start thinking about what those things make you feel so what makes me feel relaxed I feel relaxed when I am having a bath when I am sat down in the garden in the evening and the stars are out with a cup of tea, that makes me feel really relaxed. When I'm listening to affirmations and meditations, things like that really make me feel relaxed. And probably at the beach, those things make me feel relaxed. So what I then do with that is I say to myself, okay, so when I feel the opposite, when I feel stressed, when I feel anxious, what can I do from that list that will help me feel relaxed? I can have a bath. I can listen to a meditation for 10 minutes. I can go and sit outside in the garden with a cup of tea. Yes, I might not live close to a beach, but I can do those things. Or I can go for a walk. So can you see what makes me happy? Okay, so then when I feel sad, I'm going to look at my happy list and I'm going to do something from that happy list to try and help me feel better. What makes me feel confident? My confidence playlist, I'll pop it in the in this group. My confidence playlist helps me feel confident. Beyonce's new album makes me feel confident. Yes! Dancing. Dancing on my own in the blooming kitchen with music that feels good makes me feel confident. Putting on some clothes that I love and my makeup makes me feel confident. 
Listening to affirmations that are badass make me feel confident. Being around certain people that help me feel that buzz makes me feel confident. Who you surround yourself with is so important. Are there people that make you feel happy? Are there people that make, me, make you feel confident? If so, spend more time with them. Spend more time with them. Because we always seem to spend time with people that don't actually serve us. They actually bring us down. And I hear that so many times. And I put my hands up, I used to do it. I used to be around people that really did not do good for me. And the difference that I felt after I spent time with them compared to somebody else was huge. People that lift you up, people that make you feel happy and confident and relaxed, they are gold dust. Cling on to them. People that make you feel drained, people that sap the energy from you, put you down, we don't want them anymore. We do not need that anymore. So just reduce the time you're with them. So when you've done those lists, I want you to keep hold of those lists and I want you to reflect on them. You can keep adding them to them as well. And I know people might think, well, yeah, of course I know what makes you feel happy and like, etc. But sometimes it's not till we stop and look at it that we then click and go, oh, actually, do you know what else makes me feel happy? When I'm sat watching Netflix or reading a book or going to my favourite nearby park or baking a cake. And then until we write all these things down, then we can look back and go, okay, I feel, this is how I feel today. So we practice that in the morning of how, how we are on the scale, what we're feeling, and we can say to ourselves, okay, right now I feel stressed. Right, let me look at my list. What can I do on my list that will make me feel relaxed, that will make me feel happy? Can you see how it all kind of threads together? Let me look at the comments again. Alice, making my children happy, making other people laugh. When I'm helping other people through similar challenges I've had, having some me time cup on Netflix. Amazing. Thank you, Alice. Confidence. When I reach goals, I've set myself when I can see change I've made for others. Amazing. I love that. Absolutely love that. Love that. Okay. So we've looked at our scale. We've looked at an exercise to practice every morning. And you can even practice it multiple times of the day. You know, even when you're at work, like after your lunch break, you can think, like, well, okay, how am I feeling right now? Channel into that. Okay, I feel stressed. Okay, so what can I do to help me feel a bit more relaxed this afternoon? You know, so just make it part of your routine. We've looked at looked small changes for how they make a big impact. We have looked at what makes us feel happy, confident, relaxed. So now we're going to look at some goals. We're going to look at our routines, our everyday routines, and we're going to look at our goals. And then what we'll do tomorrow is we're going to map it out a little bit more in more detail. So, goals, things we can practice. Some of the things that I do with the women I work with are things such as visualizations. So I will do a visualization live. I think I'll do that as a bonus actually. Hey, hey, I've just decided that. I will do a bonus um, live with a visualization. So I will basically do a visualization with you guys on a live where you can get involved and you can watch it on replay as many times as you want. Basically, the whole point of visualization is for us to visualize what we actually want in our lives. A lot of the time we can when we're asked the question, what do you want? We'll go, um, well, I'd like a new car. I'd like to go here on holiday. I'd like a better job. But actually, that's too generalized. We need to get deeper. So visualization technique is about us going deeper and we go into our subconscious and we literally visualize in our mind what we truly, deeply desire. The things that have come out from women I've done this with have been incredible and so powerful. Today, I, I did one today with somebody and they were like crying. They were like, oh my God, that was insane. I've had another woman say to me recently how she felt butterflies in her stomach. She, she felt her body like go, whoo. So we will practice that. We will do that on another live. I'll do that as a bonus. And I'd really like you guys to try and practice that as well. So it's basically about you closing your eyes, relaxing your body, deep breathing and visualising the things that you'd like and I talk you through it. So another thing that I'd like you to start maybe looking at to put into your routine are affirmations. So my morning routine, I used to get up um, quite early because my kids did anyway and then I'd literally go straight into my workout gear, sort their breakfast out, 
I'd get a drink for myself and then I'd do a 10 minute workout on average, max 20 minutes. Then from that, I would then get all their clothes ready for them to get changed into and I would go and have a shower. In the shower, I would then listen to I am affirmations, which I will send a link through onto the group. These I am affirmations I would do every single day and I would repeat it out loud. And that is feeding your brain information about yourself and your brain will start to believe those things because I need you to believe those things because they are true, okay? After I did that, I would go downstairs, make sure the children were okay and I would do literally quick journaling. That would take about five minutes whilst I was with them. And then after that, at that time I had to drive um, sometimes to the school run. So then I would listen to a meditation on the way and on the way back. And that was my routine. Now, I'm not expecting you guys to completely transform your whole routine, but I'd love for you to start making small changes to make that massive impact. So I'd love for you to think about one or two things you would like to start doing this week. And that would be your goal. That'd be amazing. And then what I'd like you to do is we're going to look at your current goals that you're going to look at. So for this week, which is adding something new into your routine. And then from that, I want you to now think about a goal you'd like to set this month. It can be one or two. So a goal for this week, a goal for this month, and then a couple of goals for this year. And then what we can do tomorrow is we can start to map it all out. So we can start to look at how we're going to get there. What's your long term goal? What's your goal for you to do within a couple of years, within five years? And I do this quite often with women because I feel it's really, really important to kind of practice guidelining ourselves. Because sometimes we can just be in the motion of getting up, doing what we're doing, go back to bed, getting up, doing what we're doing, go back to bed. And literally time flies and we're like, what have I actually done in my life? So this is about you then recognizing for yourself what you really truly want and then how to get it. And again, this is gonna help you with your confidence because you will be living your authentic self and you will be stepping through your journey with joy and sparkle and confidence. Building our confidence takes time, but with small changes such as routine changes, such as mindset work, such as the solution focused therapy of who am I, where am I on the scale, how am I gonna to get to the next point? It's all about you giving yourself self-love. And when you give yourself self-love, you start to realize you are worthy of more because you are filling your cup. So let's fill our cup and let's bloom because girls, you blooming deserve it. You are worth more than what you allow yourself to have. Please remember that. So let's have a look. Joe, I feel like I'm the one who brings them down due to my depression or the health issues. I feel like I can't be the way they are. Who's they, Joe? Who who is they? That'd be good for me to know. Okay, so depression is one of those things that's really difficult. Um, and I'm very much a believer that you can do a lot of work on yourself to help manage your depression, but also like medically do what you need to do. I'm on antidepressants. Um, and you know, I have that to manage my post uh, depression. I have that to manage my um, PTSD, but I have done that a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work that took a good year or so to, to help me manage my mind as well. And the way that I looked at things and my mindset, friends, okay. I feel like coming. So what, what is it that they are that you, want to be. Katie, happy, watching my children do something they enjoy, laughing with friends, listening to music, oops, listening to music, paddle boarding, I'd love to paddle board, writing, confident, my new hair, yes, putting on a favourite dress top, putting on mascara and doing my eyebrows, relax, Netflix, easy watching, bath reading, cup of tea, perfect, yes, Katie, so now what I want you to do is make a practice of, keep adding to that, if you can, and practice looking at that, and then practice doing them when you feel the opposite of those feelings. Katie, okay, so I want to write a book. I have started, so about start, but I have started, but I'm going to make it happy. Yes, you are. So that can be your goal then, okay? So that's your long-term goal is, is finishing your book. Now think about a goal that you want to do this week and the goal you want to do for this month. Do I have my medication too? That's good, Joe. I'm glad you're on it. You know, you've got to 
we've got to help ourselves as well and and if that means being on medication that's fine there's also a taboo on that isn't there no need to be absolutely no need to be just like if you have a headache you need to take something for your headaches it's the same with depression and anxiety okay Ladies, I'm so proud of you all. I really am. And thank you so much for coming on board. If you're watching the replay, just literally comment replay and pop your responses in there. If any of you want me to help you with your worksheets, just send me a message. It's not a problem. And I'm going to announce the winner tomorrow of my prizes. And I'm also going to, um, I will record a visualization at some point. I will do it live. If I can't do it tomorrow, then I'll do it on Wednesday. That's fine. And then you guys can use that as a um, practice to, to use and keep going with because it is really, really powerful. Um, ladies, I'm so, so proud of you. Um, I'm going to put my confidence playlist in the page as well so you guys can listen to that. You know, that could even be something that you could have as a goal this week that you listen to the confidence playlist each day whilst you're making breakfast. You know, that's okay. Or even listen to your I am affirmations. So I'll pop that link in. You can even listen to that in the morning whilst you're making your cup of tea and just repeat it to yourself or on the school run, repeat it to yourself in the car or on the way to work. Give yourself pockets of time for you. A lot of the time I hear people going, I haven't got time. Okay, then we're gonna make time. When do you have five minutes in the car? Uh, when I go to work. Perfect, that's when you're gonna to listen to this. Okay, when do you have 10 minutes to go for, I don't know, a walk or to dance in the kitchen or to listen to a motivating podcast? Um, when I get back from work, I have a 10 minute slot. Perfect, that's when you're gonna do that. So can you see? We can make some time. So I'm really, really proud of each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining my live. Thank you so much for being a part of this incredible group. And I am here for each and every one of you. My DMs are open, so please just message me if you need anything. And also, I want you to say to yourselves right now, I am unstoppable. Write it down if you need to and keep repeating it, okay? We are going to transform starting now. Love you all so much and I will speak to you all tomorrow. Uh, it'll be tomorrow evening again. So yeah, I'll speak to you then. Bye guys.